Hi, y'all. How are you doing today? If you're new to this channel, welcome, welcome. We are a holistic healing channel that opens boxes that have to do with all kinds of natural healing topics. So we hope that you'll want to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and come back to our community. We're building an amazing community. They're so supportive of each other. We're helping each other learn and grow. And I'm so excited about the folks that are joining our community and getting to know each other and supporting one another in our spiritual growth. So today we are opening a new box for me, Apothecary at Home. I am so excited for this subscription box. So this is one of the new boxes that I found that I really feel like fits, excuse me, moving around. Yeah. I sit on my meditation cushion when I videotape. So if you see me moving around, that's probably why. Um, but this box is uh, herbal based and it gives you two to three herbs a month and then projects to do with them. And it's themed so that you're learning something about the herbs. Being that I'm working on my natural path, this is like a perfect box for me to be able to start to get in my old brain things that I need to learn. The Apothecary at Home box is $36 a month and it says this monthly herbal study box is perfect study companion for the aspiring herbalist or anyone who desires a deeper relationship with plants. Each delivery includes new herbs, recipes, and medicine making projects as well as study guides, collectible art prints, seeds, and other bonus goodies for your garden. Um, um, for your garden and, and apothecary. Let's get growing. Generous amounts of dried herbs based on the monthly theme, medicine making projects and easy to follow recipes, seasonal seeds to grow your own medicinal garden, handy study guides and online community of learners and collectible art prints and bonus apothe apothecary goodies. So um, let me show you. This is an amazing box. So it starts out yeah, I've got writing and stuff all over it. But it starts out and you get a welcome to apothecary at home. And in that very first um, section, it tells you all about different terms that you need to know. It tells you that there are three different levels of study that you can do. So you can be the person who just opens the box, enjoys the herbs, makes a couple of projects. Or if you're trying to really learn herbalism, there's a lot more to it that comes with it. So before I got the box, I did actually um, uh, print out their, where'd it go? I did actually print out their um, stuff for the month, although I did ask to get it printed. You can do it either digitally or have them send it. I do like them sending it because I can keep the booklets really close. But I did kind of want to show you. So it says heart month. Then it goes through and gives you important notes about the box, what's in it. So I already know what's in it. Um, and then this is the study guide for the month, Herbs for Heart Care. And it has introduction to heart health and talks about the heart and different things there. Then it has herbal actions for heart health. Now, if you're trying to learn herbs, herbal actions is one of the best things you can learn. And when I get to the herbs, I'll explain to you what those are and how to do it. Then it has monographs, which are basically information pages for each of the herbs. And so you've got one for Hawthorne, one for Linden, and they did not send one for Yarrow. I did look up that one on my own. Then they have the projects in there, and there's a catatonic syrup, or sorry, cardiotonic syrup with Hawthorne, Linden, brandy, honey. There's a yarrow infused oil for your skin, high blood pressure tea, Hawthorne iced tea, linden lozenges, yarrow infused witch hazel, uh, cardiotonic overnight infusion, energetic heart medicine, and then the study checklist, depending on whether you're a hobbyist, student, or adept. It also has a textbook with it if you're going to be in the adept where like this month you would read the heart chapter. So although there's a lot to it, 
you don't have to do all of the extra things with it. Now my plan is, and write in the comments below and let me know what you think, is to open this box monthly and then choose at least one of the projects, if not two or three, and do little short videos on those projects so that you can see making the tinctures or making the oils or that kind of thing. So let me know down below whether or not you are interested in seeing those other videos with the projects for the month, or if you just, you know, maybe I should just stick to doing the box on opening. But I think that would be a lot of fun. So anyway, without further ado, and I don't have a review for last month because obviously I haven't gotten it before. Although I'm not sure I'll do reviews on this box if I do the videos showing me doing the medicine stuff. So I don't know, I may just put a couple of pictures in here to just kind of show you in case you're not interested in watching the other views, the other videos. I did just do a shower bomb, a shower fizzy video. And so go check that out. Let me know if that's something that you're, you guys are interested in seeing or if it's just kind of I have fun doing it, but it's not something really interesting for you to watch. Because obviously those videos aren't going to get as much views as, someone, as a box where someone's searching for the title. So I just need to know from my community whether or not you appreciate those. And let's get in to a pocket theory at home. So you open it up. We've got the little booklets here, and this is what I printed up. But like I said, I like having these little booklets. And I probably won't print them all up, which then means that, you know, uh, I feel like I'm actually saving paper by having them print them up because this is a lot less paper and ink than what I use when I print them up. Um, so, and then we have the art prints and then the box. Now the box, what's inside it, isn't like super duper duper exciting to open and new products because it's herbs. But I want to tell you a little bit about the herbs as we open them up and in those other videos as we do them. So forgive me if I kind of cheat sheet down. I actually uh, did cards for these three herbs. I'm not going to read everything that I did on them, but you can kind of see I am trying to study the herbs this month so that I really learn. Um, and then I am going to do the three things that I decided to do was the cardiotonic syrup, the yarrow infused oil, and the yarrow infused witch hazel. So um, those are the three that I'm thinking about doing. Let me know if there was another one that you thought you would want to see. So let's start out then with our little art cards. These are really nice because you typically are getting the dried herbs and so you may not know what the plant looks like and if you're ever going to do wild foraging, which I'm still kind of scared to do, I'm trying to learn enough to where I'm not that afraid to do it um, because there's so many plants that look like each other. So we've got the two um, herbs that we're doing this month. Uh, and of course they are in their Latin forms. So let me see. This is going to be the hawthorn. It's the hawthorn berry there. And hawthorn, first thing you want to know is the herbal actions of an herb. And the reason that the herbal actions are so important is because the herbal actions basically tell you what the herb does. So it's going to take you a little while to learn those herbal actions and what they mean. I've already come up with a couple that I didn't know before. And um, so as, as you learn those though, then if you know that about the herb, then you know so much. So let's look at Hawthorne. The herbal actions of Hawthorne are, it's a cardiotonic, a cardioprotective, an antioxidant, a collagen, a stabilizing mild astringent, a hypotensive. Um, hypertensive is when you have high blood pressure. So hypotensive means it's going to bring your blood pressure down. An antiarrhythmic, so for like heart rhythms and that kind of thing, it will help with uh, arrhythmias. A diuretic, an anti-ischemic, and um, an anti-ischemic, that's where the blood supply doesn't have enough oxygen in it. And um, then a positively ion, uh, inotropic, positively inotropic. And that means that it contracts the, um, it contracts the muscular tissue. 
So like for the heart and stuff like that, it will work. So the hawthorn is known as the plant that will um, help with any condition that affects the heart or cardiovascular system. Contraindications I want to make sure and give you, if you have low blood pressure already or you're on medications that like one to throw out there from my EMT days, um, if someone was taking Viagra and having chest pains, we couldn't give them the medication because the medication will drop your blood pressure. If you're taking something like Viagra that's already a vasodilator, so it already makes your vessels big, then you can have a problem if you take something um, like if we give them some of the cardiac drugs that lower blood pressure because it can make them bottom out and actually go into cardiac arrest. So as always with the disclaimer I put on all of my videos, you know that I've been in Western medicine as well as Eastern medicine and natural healing. And so we want to make sure that if you're trying any new herbal regimen or any supplements, that if you're on current medications or seeing a doctor for any medical conditions, that you clear those things through them first. Now, they may not know a lot and they may go, I don't know. So make sure and do your own research as well. But there are some things that... Um, are not going to be good for you to use or you may need to be really careful and use them in small doses until you see how they're going to affect you. Um, that's the one thing that they say about herbs is not just to go by the things that we have written down, the things that we know. Get to know that herb yourself because um, just like food, there are different allergies we have, different foods that affect us differently. It's going to be the same thing with herbs and plant material. So now that I've told you a little bit about this beautiful hawthorn, um, let me tell you that it's also called the ha, the thorn apple, the may blossom, mayberry, or may bush. And um, it, its magical properties is that it's known to associate with portals to the magic realm. So during Beltane, people would sleep under the hawthorn tree because it was said that it would allow them to enter the fairy realm and then the magical beings could decide if they wanted to assist them with what they wanted. The flowers are an aphrodisiac. It's known for um, to help with fertility. It's associated with love and lust. The bark and berries are used in love spells. And it is sacred to fairies. So if you're going to take a sprig, you need to ask permission before taking it. And if you're going to cut down the whole tree, like they used to for May Day when they would do the Maypole, um, they said that you want to give some type of a offering that you're going to leave at the tree. The Greeks used it in weddings uh, to, for chastity and prosperity, and in Ireland, the cradles, they would tie twigs onto it because they believed that it would protect babies from evil. Uh, it's been used since the Middle Ages in first century, and um, they use both the blossoms and the pole sometimes for Beltane and for May Day. It's also known as the Maybush because the berries and flowers, the, it flowers in May and then the berries come out. So there is the information on Hawthorne. Did you learn something new even if you knew about Hawthorne? Comment below and let me know. And let's pull out the Hawthorne. So you get your herbs in really cute bags like this. Now, if you're going to keep these long and not use these, um, they do have the plastic in the bag, so that's going to keep it for a while. But herbs are best stored usually in glass jars, and usually you want to keep them out of the sunlight and in a cool place. So these are hawthorn berries. Hawthorn berries dried two ounces. So let me see if I can show these to you. Oops, spilled them all over. Hard to show when you can't put your hand up with things. Can you see them? There you go. So just beautiful berries. Let me get the runaway berry because I'm going to make medicine with it. Mm, I love the smell of herbs. Very earthy. And of course, the berry doesn't have tons of smell, but so that's our hawthorn. Now, um, because it is heart health, I do want to just show you a couple of other things, and we'll get to the other herbs. So they did send a heart sticker, and they did say there is the little tags on them, so if you can label the heart, you could do that. See all the little 
numbers and stuff. Very cute sticker though of the heart. And I like it that it's an anatomical heart kind of a thing. Then we got loose leaf tea and I think it usually has a tea in it every single time. So this is blood pressure tea. It has lemongrass, organic ginkgo, organic hibiscus, organic ginger, organic hawthorn berry. And I do know that they try their best to only use organic herbs in this box. And it says it brews four to five cups and I'm glad it does say on it non-caffeine. I don't mind caffeine, but I like when they put that on the label because some people aren't quite sure with the green teas and the black teas. Green teas and black teas typically have caffeine in them. Um, uh, it's more just the way that they're produced. Like I thought green teas were only certain plants and black teas were other, but it really has to do with the way the leaves are produced or processed um, kind of a thing. So there's your blood pressure tea. And I'm going to go ahead and smell it because I will use it this month. I will drink it while I'm making the projects. Oh, nice, nice. Just a really nice herbal, you know, regular herbal smell. Nothing. It's not like sweet or anything like that. But that's going to have some amazing effects. And remember, with the heart, when we talk about the magical aspects of herbs, some people are like, okay, well, science is starting to prove some of the um, reasons why herbs are doing what they're doing and why they're working for us. But when you get into the magical properties, karma, you'll lose me. I mean, I don't believe in those kinds of things. But you have to realize that most of the magical properties, excuse me, most of the magical properties actually fall right in line with the medicinal properties. So because this is a heart, a heart, um, uh, an herb that helps with heart, you're going to see things in the magical properties like love, fertility, you know, all of those kinds of things that go right along with the herbal actions of the plant. So they're not so far-fetched. Now, some of the uh, magical properties we get to maybe, you know, if you don't believe in past lives and it's for psychic abilities or those kinds of things. If you don't want to take those things, I'm good with that. I'm just helping you to see that the magical properties are not really that far away from the medicinal properties. And that's why it makes sense that they use the magical properties they do because of the medicinal things that the herb was doing. So let's get on to our next main herb. And the next main herb was linden. And this is linden. Pretty. A little flower. So linden is known as the lime blossom or the lime tree. My dog. Yeah. He thinks it's time to go. Go out. Not time to video. Time to go out. Anyway, so I apologize if you hear him whining and groaning. He is one of those dogs that will sit and whine, even sitting right next to you. He just sits and moans and whines. So linden is good for fever, inducing sweating, uh, reducing nasal congestion, throat irritation. It's a sedative. It's good for heart palpations, high blood pressure, uh, relieves itchy skin, indigestion, and hysteria. So the herbal actions, remember I told you these are the important things to know because it will help to it will cue you into the things that it does. So the herbal actions, it's a nervine, which is why it's a sedative. It helps with nerves. It's a diaphoretic and a diuretic. So it both helps you eliminate waste through urination and that kind of thing. It also helps you eliminate waste through sweating. It's a demucillant, um, which is soothing and mollifying. It mitigates or reduces and softens. It's a relaxant, a mild astringent, a hypertensive, and it's also an antispasmodic. It says it's particularly good when it's used with high systolic pressure with hardening of the arteries. So it's a, um, a mild antihypertensive, and it curbs the development of arthiosclerosis and hypertension. Uh, also helps with the heart palpations in a tonic. So contraindications, it says if the tea is mucilaginous, which means it's gelatinous or it's gummy, it can interfere with the absorption of other prescription medications. So if you're on other prescription medications and your doctor says it's okay to, to use Linden, you'll want to separate taking your pharmaceuticals about three hours between um, 
taking anything, uh, like if you're doing a tea and it's gotten thick or um, gelatinous, I guess, kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know that I'd be drinking it if it was like that. So it's been used in Old England for convulsion, epilepsy, nervous distemper, and in the 1800s used for diarrhea, colds, flu, restlessness, nervous headache, painful digestion, and mild hysteria. The indigenous people used it for diarrhea, cough medicine, dermatological aid, gastrointestinal problems, snake bites, tuberculosis. They also then used the fiber for cordage, furniture, making canoes, and for sewing material. And the magical properties of linden, it's for protection, immortality, luck, love, nerve calming, uh, clearing, distressing sleep. They say if you take equal parts of linden and lavender in a pillow, it will hasten sleep. We know that lavender helps with that, so add a little linden to it. It's used in purification rituals and baths for sabbats or for rites. The leaves and flowers are used in love spells and the leaves are used in immortality spells. It's called lime oil when you have the um, oil from it, and it, the lime oil is used for purification and protection to promote calm and tranquility and to strengthen love. So again, magical properties go right along usually with the theme or the heart with the linden. So let's look at our linden. Here's our linden. And the linden says that it is the leaf and the flower dried. Very pretty. Let's see if I can get it out for you to see. Whoa! There you go. Not doing very well. There. So it's just your dried and cut leaf and flower. Not tons of a smell. Again, those, a lot of times when you have the dried, they don't have as much smell to them that they might if they were fresh. The third herb for the month is yarrow. Yarrow is one of my favorite herbs. Um, and the reason why uh, it grows a lot where I grew up in Utah and Idaho. And yarrow, I mean, literally, even when I looked it up, and I would, I looked these up in about five different books. Um, where is it? I'm going to find it really quick because this was great. So this is what uh, the person said on this, and it's so true. It's my sediments exactly. So if I were leaving planet Earth tomorrow and had to choose one herb to travel with me, it would be yarrow. I have never known a stronger ally. As a highly empathetic person who tends to absorb energy of others, Yarrow has helped me establish healthy boundaries and distinguish between nourishing situations and depleting ones. So uh, that kind of, you know, tells you right there. And when you start to see, like the Mormons have used it forever. Brigham Young called it, you know, the herb to have kind of thing because it's good with diarrhea. It's good with stomach problems. It's good with headache. It's good with you know, heart. It's just good for so many things. It calms you down, again, helps you with those boundaries and so on and so forth. And it's so pretty. It's a really pretty flower. I'll try and find a picture of it and post it up in here. But it's got little teeny flowers that make a big flower. And it's just so pretty. And you'll see it growing out. Um, I've seen them like white and yellow and some different colors as well. So um, now the Latin name that comes from this is because of Achilles, because Achilles was said to bathe in Yarrow before he went into war, and that was supposed to help him to stay safe. And then he would bring Yarrow with him because one of the most amazing things about Yarrow is Yarrow actually will stop bleeding. So you can take it for internal bleeding, but you can also use the powdered uh, plant and put it directly on wounds and it will actually help to coagulate and stop the bleeding. So in war, yarrow is a really good one to have and that's why Achilles, it was his, uh, his uh, herb of choice. And of course, uh, when it talks about his mother dripping him in the river, you wonder if maybe it was the yarrow and everything. And of course, where he got killed was where she held him 
where the water didn't touch. So interesting uh, folklore stories there. So the herbal actions for yarrow, and yarrow is called staunch weed, soldier's wound wart, which is where the stories come from, uh, pumager pumagillo, which is Spanish, a milfoil or squirrel tail, which is what the um, Ojibwe, I don't know how to pronounce that tribe. I am so sorry. I apologize to my indigenous people. I am not very good with some of the tribe names. Um, so it is known as the master of the blood herb. And that's because of probably the stopping bleeding and that kind of thing. And yet it also does some other things inside because I know it helps with asthma because it can help to thin the blood that goes into the lungs and stuff and may help with asthma. So uh, it's known for opening pores, purifying the blood, inflammation, digestion with inflammation, uh, bleeding or internal bleeding. So it's going to be really good for things like... Um, um, ulcers, bleeding ulcers, and that kind of thing. So the herbal actions, remember these are the things that we need to cue into to kind of know what it does. It's a, a anodyne, an antibacterial, an anticoagulant, an antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, anti astringent, bitter, a diaphoretic, a diuretic, a homostatic, uh, that means it'll stop the bleeding. Uh, hypoglossemic, hypotensive, and, and I'm not going to say this right, styptic, S-T-Y-P-T-I-C. And styptic means that it contracts the, um, the tissue like an astringent and it binds and will stop the hemorrhaging. So when we're looking at the projects we're doing, like I'm doing the yarrow-infused witch hazel for my face and the yarrow-infused oil for all my loose, hangy skin after losing all that weight, that yarrow will help to contract the tissue and ho I'm hoping that it will help with my skin. So we'll see. Now, um, if you drink it hot, you get a diaphoretic effect. If you drink it cold, you get the diuretic effect. Um, and the root sometimes is chewed for toothaches. So contraindications, it is not recommended for extended use while pregnant. We're going to talk a little bit about that and about why. It's also in the ragweed family. So if you have ragweed allergies, this might not be your very best friend. Although if you're buying it like this and using it medicinally, it may or may not cause you problems with your allergies. The best thing is, is that it is safe for children. So it will help reduce fever in children, and because of the helping with the anti-inflammatory as well, it will help with a lot of the aches and pains with colds and flus. So medicinally, it stops the blood flow. It thins the blood to the lungs, so it may help with asthma. I talked about the toothache, chewing on the root. The flowers will help with fever, colds, sore throat, hemorrhoids, bleeding ulcers, it tones and stimulates mucous membranes of the urinary tract, helps with the female reproduction tract, the respiratory tract, and the gastrointestinal tract. It's a nerve tonic, menstrual regulator, helps with joint inflammation like arthritis. It's good for the kidneys, helps with varicose veins, gastroenteritis, dysentery, and combine it with chamomile for cold or flu. Um, in a skin tonic, which we know we're making some of those with the oil and the witch hazel, it opens the pores, it increases circulation, it's cooling, and then reduces inflammation. And you can use that as a steam or you can use it as a spray. It protects against the sun and wind and is good for fibroids, bruises, or mouth sores. And the essential oil or the tea is good for history, or, or sorry, good for headaches. The history, it's been preserved in temples uh, because it's richly endowed with spiritual properties. It influences the lifeblood, they say, which is the essence of the ego that's carried in your blood. Um, it's used in love charms, and in China, yarrow stocks, they use yarrow stocks to reawaken spiritual forces of the subconscious mind during I Ching. Now, the magical properties, it's known for courage, love, psychic powers. It was even used in exorcisms. 
It's used for divination and it's worn to protect the user. If you hold it, it will stop fears and grant courage. If you hang it over your bed, like for weddings, it will ensure that your love will last seven years. Most of us, I think, hope our marriages last longer than seven years. This may be steeped more in like the hand fasting ceremonies and such because I think that they renewed those every seven years. So it would make sense that that would say seven years because with a hand fasting, you renew it every seven years. Decide whether or not you want to renew it. It's used in love spells. Carrying it brings love and attracts friends and relations that you want to contact. Um, the flower infusion may improve psychic powers, and if you wash your hair in it, it will help with baldness. But it does say that it won't reverse baldness that's already happened. So, there's your yarrow, and like I said, yarrow is one of my favorite. So let's open this up here. And the flowers, because they're so small, I've dried them out and they are a pain to dry but these are each little teeny tiny flowers oops dropping it all over so there is the yarrow then in this box it comes with everything you need to make what you're making there's a card down here on the bottom I want to get oh this is good Health disclaimer, by purchasing or using our product, you acknowledge that the contents are for educational purposes only and our suggestions are not to be interpreted as health advice. Herbalists are not doctors. Herbalists do not diagnose, nor do they treat. Herbalists may make recommendations to support the body's own natural healing processes. Remember that you are solely responsible for researching any herb you intend to use internally or topically. The ideas we offer are not FDA approved. We recommend you consult with a qualified medical practitioner before working with any herb, especially if you are pregnant, immunocompromised, have allergies, or are taking medications. These agreements are governed by the law in Berkeley, California. So um, you know that I kind of have my disclaimer on my videos, and this is exactly why, because yeah, we just want to make sure that you're taking charge of your health and that you're making sure that you're talking to any of your health care providers so that you don't end up taking herbs that are going to counteract some of the beneficial medications and medical protocols that you might already be on with your doctor. Then we have, oh, there's always a packet of seeds, and so here is our yarrow seeds. Evidently, they were sending seeds of the two main herbs before, but some people um, didn't like it because a lot of them are trees uh, and so you know they gave us the seeds to it but it might take 10 years before you could actually harvest and utilize the herb and so they are trying to put in seeds that are more seasonal that will grow faster so that you can because it's so much more powerful when you're making your tinctures and stuff like that if you've got herbs that you've grown yourself and processed yourself. And we do a lot of that even where we live in Phoenix, Arizona. We've got raised gardens in the back, our backyard. We raise lots of herbs and lots of things and we dry them and can them and yeah, that kind of thing. So um, putting that extra energy into it by growing it yourself only makes the medicines more powerful. Your intentions are in there and your loving care of taking care of that plant. Then in the box, we have the items that you would need to make the projects, and they are going to assume that you're making two projects, although I'm making three, which is fine because one of them I'm going to put in a spray bottle. So we've got the two bottles here to make our tincture, or I'm going to put the yarrow-infused oil in one of them as well with our little droppers in there. Then we have our bottles, and these bottles are to make the pro project in. So you're going to take the herb and put the brandy over it, let it sit for as long as it needs to. That's why I was thinking about doing those other videos kind of in the time lapse thing, like I did the bath, the bomb video, or the shower the shower melts, <laughs> um, but I did the shower melts and kind of do it in the time lapse so that you can see me shaking it every day and then see the final product. So again, let me know if that's something that interests you guys. I'll probably do a couple of them and then I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy them. If not, maybe I'll just consider them part of my studying aid. 
Then you have two bags of the muslin bags. These are reusable. You can wash them. And what you're going to do once you finish your product in here, you're going to pour it down into here and squeeze out all of the herbs as you put your final product into the final product bottle. And on the recipes, just so you know, it does have, so like on this one, the cardio tonic, you can see that it does have, say, take one to two droppers full up to three times a day, whether you feel like your cardiovascular system or emotional heart could use some love. And then it tells you that it can stay up to a year and you're going to store it in a cool, dark place. And this one sits for a full moon cycle or four weeks. So some of them infuse in different time periods, also depending, like a lot of times on mine, I've infused them using a crock pot, using a heat method where you put a little bit of water in the crock pot, and you put your jars down in there, and it, the heat really helps infuse it quickly. You can do it within 24 hours to really infuse that oil. Um, but I think with these, I'm going to try the cold way just so I get some experience doing that. So what did you think of this box? I know it's not super exciting to just see the items that are in it, but I'm hoping that I'm giving you extra information about the herbs and that it is interesting to learn about new herbs. Let me know if you want to see uh, those recipe videos done. And guess what? I'm doing a giveaway that will be coming up in the next couple of videos. So look for that. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can join our community, get to know all of us. We are having so much fun learning together. And come back often to the channel where you can say, Karma's my friend. Bye, y'all.